Hey, how's it going? This is Joe and Tell. And today I'm going to be taking a look at the Vankyo V600 1080p projector. So I previously reviewed a 4K projector and I actually own a 1080p projector that I think retailed for around $1,000 when I first bought it. So this caught my eye because it was under $300 and it was a native 1080p projector. That's not something that I'm used to seeing, but there it was. And right off the bat, I can tell you that this is not better than my $1,000 1080p projector. It just isn't. And I think that that's fair considering that it is about a quarter of the cost. So I'm just gonna go over the pros and cons. And the first thing is I wanted to make sure that this is a 1080p native projector because a lot of times they'll say 1080p compatible, which means that it can accept a signal, but it's not actually outputting it. This is actually 1080p, awesome. The second pro is obviously this is very inexpensive. It's hard to go wrong when it's this inexpensive. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description. It'll be an affiliate link to Amazon and to this product and so you can check it out there and see what the updated price is. The other thing is that it has a remote control and the remote control seems to work pretty well. And I like the way it felt in the hand, just an extra little touch. Of course, almost all these have a remote and so just an extra thing that I liked. Another thing is that this is using LED technology, meaning that the lamp life is much longer than a typical bulb. And so I think the specs on this is somewhere around And so that's much better than my typical lamp projector. Another good thing is that it's responsive. So a lot of times a projector, sometimes the lower end ones are a little bit slow when you're going through the menus. This one was pretty quick. The other thing that was a surprise is that the speaker wasn't terrible. You know, I don't know how these guys do it, but yeah, the speaker was acceptable. Of course, it's not better than a home theater, but if it's all you have, then I think it's perfectly acceptable. The other thing that I would like to say is about the image quality. And I would say that you can get a good image out of this, but you have to tweak the settings. So I'm gonna give you a calibration profile or a, you know the settings that I found worked best for me, and that'll be at the end of this video. Another thing that I found on this is that the firmware is user upgradable via USB. And so the 4K projector that I recently reviewed, I think that thing goes for around 1500 bucks, and that one can also do that, but this one at under $300, that's pretty cool that it can do it as well. Other thing that I noticed about this is that it turns on and off very quickly. Specifically, it turns off very quickly because the LEDs don't get as hot as a typical bulb. The fans do not need to stay on in order to cool the LED. The other thing is that it comes with a carrying case, which is pretty handy. Everything just fits in there. Yeah, that's cool. It also comes with an HDMI cable. Thank you for that. Remember the days when they didn't used to include the HDMI? This does. The other thing is that externally, I think it looks pretty decent. It doesn't look like a cheap, device, so something else. It also has a bunch of inputs. You have two HDMIs, you have an SD card slot, so different ways to get video in there. Before I get into the cons, overall the video quality I would say is very acceptable, very good for the price, but you do have to tweak the settings in my opinion, and so I'll do that after I say the cons. One of the cons that I noticed is the keystone, meaning if you have it below or above, you need to adjust it so the vertical lines are straight, and when you do that, it makes it so either the top is blurry or the bottom is blurry. So you can get the center nice and clear, but if you do use the keystone, it blurs the top and the bottom. So what I would recommend is try to get it as straight on as possible to get the best possible image quality. Alongside with that is that the corner sharpness is not the best. It's not perfect, it's not great, acceptable. The other thing is that the contrast ratio, also not the best, they claim Maybe that's true, maybe it's not, but I did notice that with their default settings, it tends to blow out highlights. Another reason to use a calibration profile 
after this. The other thing I noticed were the greens were very bright, but the blue and the reds kind of lacking. And so that's a trick. I think green is one of the easiest colors to reproduce and to make really bright. And so that's what they went with to get to that lumen rating. Do I believe it's the lumen rating that they say? Mm, I think it's possible, but I think with everyday viewing of actual, you know, footage where you have to look at skin tones and to get it accurate, you have to take a hit when it comes to brightness. So yeah, I think that that lumen rating is possible, but in a real world scenario where you want it to look accurate, you're gonna have to bump down some of those settings. The last thing I didn't like was I felt like the fan was louder than average. Overall, what I would say about this is I can easily recommend it if it's your first projector. I think it's a great first projector to have. It's 1080p, the image quality is good. Once you use the settings, I think it's a good business projector. So if you're gonna show PowerPoint presentations, I think it'll be perfect even without calibration. I think it's good if you're gonna be using it for a smaller screen. So let's say a 100 inch screen and below, I think you can have it calibrated and I think the brightness will be good enough in most scenarios even if you have some ambient light coming in. I think it's good if you're gonna use it outdoors because you know if you're gonna have an outdoor party, maybe the thing will get knocked over and if you're using a projector that's $1,500, $2,000, $3,000, you might be a little bit scared to have it outdoors, right? But with this, it's inexpensive enough so that if something happens to it, eh, doesn't hurt too much. And last, if you have kids, I think it's great. You can set it up there for cartoons and things like that. I don't think that they're looking for the best accuracy. So I think it's good if you have some kids. Yeah, overall, I would recommend this to somebody who's just getting started. Now, it's not the best, most accurate projector out there. It's not the brightest and it doesn't have the most features, but you have to look at the price and I would say totally worth it considering the price. And so here are the calibration settings that I used. These are what I found work the best and leave a comment down below if you own this projector and if you try these settings, let me know if those settings work well for you. Anyway, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I upload new videos or when I go live. Anyway, that's it. Take care, bye-bye.